Hello everybody, I am Max Lennox alongside the four-time NEW World Champion Erwin and we welcome you to Brawl 315. We are fast approaching the time of year where we have our anniversary celebrations for NEW and Brawl. And we are also getting ever closer to the Invitational Cup tonight though. We have two main ranking matches plus a three-round injection match. Sean O'Grady uh, taking his first steps in that division, a move that you, you yourself have questioned, Max. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure how that's going to work out for Sean, but we're going to find out here tonight. This is Tyler York in that match. He's had quite a lot of experience so far in that division. Of course, we've uh, got our main event here tonight, Day Durant. 17 taking on Psycho Sanya number 15. Looking to move up and then we're opening here tonight. The Purist number 54 taking on Diamond Ali number 53. And of course the Purist a member of the WVGU. Thank you, Hernando. Well, here we go. The purist. Could be the blue chip at the WVGU are looking for. Been on a little bit of a run as of late. So, now, of course, Mitty is still negotiating with the superstar over his uh, in ring compensation, if you will, for the attack by Rick Weaver. So, Farley keeping a card close to their chest. Kind of wondering what they are going to choose. Superstar himself may choose on his own, but it's no uh, guarantee that the WVG will have any input into that. And his opponent from Cairo, Egypt, weighing in at 270 pounds, Diamond Ali! Incredible 75% win ratio so far. Yeah, you talk about blue chippers, and when we're, when we're talking about the new breed, the uh, new set, if you will, of uh, talent coming into NEW, the Diamond Ali has to be on the top tip of everyone's tongue in, the, in that conversation. He's certainly looking like he's a very promising prospect, set a 77% win ratio. That is incredible. In the purest, being accompanied to the ring by a former men's world champion. Let's not forget another former men's world champion, Tasmania. Counted big things for Darren Ali. See a lot of potential in this guy, quite frankly, so do I. Purus already started making his way through the uh, rankings. Proven himself, but. And we're up against someone with a lot of wind under their wings at the moment. for our official here tonight. Strength of Ali right off the bat here. Oh, huge suplex. Yeah, he's certainly not one-dimensional, this Diamond Ali. He likes to mix it up a bit. Mixes uh, power and technicality very well. And stomps to the chest of the purist. Shot sends the purist back down to the mat. Bear hook suplex there. Overhead, beautiful bridge there by Diamond Ali. Credit to uh, the purist, he, he went right back into it. Yeah. Oh, side side. Oh, that suplex position. Oh, he looking for a no. splash. First Pierce. mistake of the night by Ali. Finally finds an opening. Oh. 
could not capitalize. A big headbutt from Ali there. This thing is back under control. Once again, it's matches like this. Kind of got that uh, wind in the sails of Ali so early on. Right? Yeah, he's even seen work former world champions saying big things about him. I've seen it time and time again in this business. Sometimes you just know they're destined for great things. Oh, arguably WBGU oh, as a unit, perhaps more than singularly, have those same aspects. Golf. Here is trying to prove otherwise in singles competition here tonight. Not going very well. Diamond out of the <coughs> just manhandling him. Repeatedly no. power slamming him to the mat. Big splash. Oh, big claws line. Great response the there by the purist. Quickly turning things around the moment there. Oh, look at that TTG trying to throw a chair into the ring. And uh, with the unique rulings of W, excuse me, with any W, the, ch the chair will will not be removed and unless until deemed safe to do so by the referee. If it's indirectly used, if someone slammed on it, then that's perfectly legal. Fair game, if you will. Manchester Topa trying to find that moment to remove that object. Oh, of course, giving a stern word to ZTG for introducing it in the first place. Oh, that shot. There. Do it. So TG looking up very closely now, Mike Stoke are finally getting rid of that chair. Oh, DDT from the purist though. They're looking for a power slam himself. Oh, going for a pen. Two count. Pure is going for it for a second time. Huge power slam. And he's sweeping the leg. <coughs> Stumped the back. Oh! Caught him at sleeper hold. Here is struggling to fight free, but can't. No, that's it. Just like that, just when it was a case of physical offense, Ali switching it up goes to the technical submission. I think that caught the purist off guard there. Tense opening round. Dead center of the ring, nowhere for the purists to go. ZTG couldn't see it. your winner, Diamond Ali! Take a look at the ranking system. We uh, promised we'd attempt to explain it to you a bit more in detail, and as the uh, names go out here, we've just updated it based on the victory there. And currently, the males number 58 to 54 are in contention process for the NEW Men's Junior Championship, of course, number 53 currently being the Men's Junior Champion. Of course, if that changes, so will the numbers in contention. Males number 58 through to number 1 finishing a challenge to the men's junior champion. The champion does not have to accept. Females number 58 to 32 are in contention process for the NEW Women's Junior Championship. Females 30 to 1 finishing a champion, uh, challenge for that championship. Again, the champion does not have to accept. 
Males number 52 to 27 are in contention process for the NEW United Kingdom Championship. Again, number 26 being the champion. 25 through 1 can issue a challenge for that championship. 25 through 13 are in contention for the NEW European Championship. Males 12 through 1 can issue a, champion, a challenge for that championship. Males 30 through number 1 are in contention process for the NEW Women's World Championship and the males of number 11 through number 1 are in contention for the NEW Women's World, uh, Men's World Championship, excuse me. Well yeah, all information uh, can be found. It's very complex, we really set up quite a complex system here, but we think it's going to uh, allow for some very interesting developments here in the divisional championships again those huge challenges, challenge opportunities, Tasmania already wanting to sort of step down for uh, filling those gaps in his cha uh, championship career if you will, he's wanting to go after that UK championship, this allows him to. But you know we'll explain it as we go ladies and gentlemen, you know it, it may look complicated but like the bottom line is this could give more people opportunities in championship matches depending on the champion. Yeah, it stops people getting locked into those matches. <coughs> that was the, the issue we had with the process we were running, it was running quite nicely but the problem was UK and European divisions were thinning out somewhat. So the committee worked uh, over quite a few weeks coming up with this system and again the initial rankings were all based on uh, prior accomplishments and other attributes. Necessary to try and explain this a little bit better. Oh, I hope I did a good enough job there. Anyway, we will be back for that rejection match. Three rounds. Tyler Young taking on Sean O'Grady. Don't go anywhere. Well, you know, Erwin, I've made no secret about the fact that I believe that going into the injection division is a mistake for Sean O'Grady, one of the participants in this matchup. But if you look at guys who, on paper, shouldn't fit in the injection division, it's Tyler York, and Tyler York has made a success of it, so it can be done. Spent a long time finding the injection division late into last year, couldn't quite beat Adam Irvin to the end of title match.
I wonder if he bought the merch or whether it got, he got a freebie here with. Championship run of 133 days. Again, the injection, cha uh, injection division completely different. Our first five minute round here. Both men battling back on the fourth huge suplex from O'Grady after a couple of shots from Tyler York. Big elbow drop by O'Grady. Both from stomp. Yeah, I think, you know, for these two guys, with due respect to them, we can forget about the traditional technical-based matches that we see in the injection division. This is just going to be five minute rounds of two horses beating the living holy hell out of each other. Trapezio squeeze, though, from York. And as soon as I say that, they throw in some technicality for you. <laughs> I mean, it is an interesting thought. I mean, Alex Crom, possibly one of the most technical wrestlers we have on the roster, the current champion. Top five in the world, in my opinion, Alex Crom. Is it that the current contenders, oh, sent to the outside there, is it that the current contenders in the division are trying to switch it up to throw Alex Crom off the guard? It's a good question. We are seeing a lot more uh, super heavyweights like Carl Abbott. Start to make headways in the uh, division. Rico Carver as well. Oof. Well, you know, Alex Crom learned to fight a long time ago, but you do raise a very interesting point. A conflict of styles like that means the champion is undoubtedly going to have to mix it up a little bit if one of the men you've just mentioned, or one of the men in the ring today, become the number one contender. Question: What works better in this round's rules and environment? I think so high impact can definitely oh. work. Don't get me wrong, but it's got to be measured, done at the right time and against the right opponent. A veteran like Tyler York isn't really going to go down to one move unless it's one hell of a move. So far, he's having a struggle against these swinging fists of O'Grady. Brawler coming out in him there for oh. both. Oh. Big back elbow and stops that. York delivering some of his own. You know, in my opinion, O'Grady should never be afraid of his brawling oh, oh, sling blade. That's what brought oh, him to the dance. Drop kick, yeah. Speed and agility has come on since uh, Farmer teaming with Blaze. Golf sweeping STF by Tyler York, though. Number one. How is Blaze? Has he spent all his money yet? Another trapezius squeeze going back to those tendons was Tyler York. Really quick to get out of the way, but so is Tyler York there. Oh, oh. big deal. Just manhandling O'Grady there. Short, rapid burst of strength from Tyler York. See O'Grady instinctively trying to get his hands up, but Tyler York just overpowering the big Irishman there. Not an easy feat. A minute 20 left on the clock in this first round. A big elbow drop from Tyler York. Oh, Go. hard into the corner. Body to body, Tyler York. Off oh, on a rampage here. Off, oh, big boot. Go oh, and a leg drop. Hogan esque from Tyler York. This but could be did. over right here. Oh, no! Really. Brought out the classics there, did Tyler York. Time was running low on this first round. Oh, huge face buster. York keeping up the offense. Oh, to the gut. Could be looking for it. And 
Hit sit out power bomb. That was emphatic. That could be it. Oh, first round, gosh. Tyler York. Very close to the end of the round as well. Yeah, I think there was something like 22, 23 seconds remaining in the round, Irwin. All this impact. But Tyler York changed one point oh to three. This could have been this could have really been the beginning, that that huge leg drop there. A lot of energy kicking out of that very tight pin there. Tyler York kept focus though, so kept his eye on the prize. Go! Yeah, that big face buster of course and then followed by this. One big power bomb late later by York. The technique and the power here. Boom! Sit out power bomb with authority and a free count. Good night, O'Grady. Round one goes to York. Second round starts now. Bells rang. Five minutes on the clock, and O'Grady trying to come out quick here. And again, it's big points to be earned in the injection division. Three for a clean victory like that. Oh, pinfall loss of mission. Oh. Which now puts the pressure more on O'Grady. Yeah, and it's showing he's come out. All guns blazing in his first minute. Time we aren't trying to stop that. Hard kicks from O'Grady. O'Grady's one of those wrestlers for me, Irwin, that he, he doesn't really start running at a hundred percent until he's heard a little bit. I think that fighter's instinct kicks in. Is that perhaps why he's gone into the injection division, knowing that perhaps that first round will not favour him, but he can always claw it. Power. Power. There it is! That Just could be it, round two! That. Two! Oh. No! Tyler York with just enough wherewithal to get that shoulder yeah, up. Yeah, I don't know how Tyler York did that. The big Irishman cleared the way well and truly. Oof, what a chop. Oh! A big scooping power bomb there from Tyler York with a morning with a lot of kicks. On the ground it already. Scooped. Oh. That's first in front turn buckle. He's trying to squeeze the life out of O'Grady. Another round would essentially secure a big victory here for Tyler even if O'Grady could claw back a third. Oh, a hard stomp to that arm. O'Grady scraping back <laughs> some momentum here, some kicks to those ankles. Oof. Oof, another stump across the chest. Already starting to pick up some steam here. Caught again by Tyler York though. Damn, just the strength of York just throwing down head, throwing O'Grady across the ring. Oof, and again. Yeah, come on, the middle rope, big elbow drop. Oof. Good kick from O'Grady. Step back into the corner once again. For a power second time. Yeah, he might have got out of one, but there's no way he's getting out of two. And around to Sean O'Grady. He is just equalised that match. Well, you know, he did exactly what he needed to do in this round, Erwin. He came out strong and he never really let up. Sean O'Grady just kept focus, kept on the attack, just hitting any part of Tyler, Tyler York's body he could reach. A great knee drag there by York to try and recover. Yeah, this is a replay, ladies and gentlemen. It seems like the visual there is missing. Oh! Yeah, it was a great. Great recovery here from uh, 
Sean on Brady, oh, especially after a huge elbow drop. Yeah, swift kick there at that point it, it, it did look like it was going Tyler York's way, but that sly kick to the head by O'Grady, he got himself in the corner, tuned up the band, and boom, there it is. Beautiful Furabale got the distance that time, got the run up, and got the three. No, he does not. Here we go, final round. Yeah, three and points apiece. And a deciding oh. round. It's gone down to the wire here, Erwin. Mean, there's no overtime in this. So, oh. we're going to get a winner one oh. way or the other. Word. Unless, of course, we get a draw. That's still possible at this stage. From Tyler York. Something tells me a draws on the card between oh. these two tonight. It doesn't look like it with the offense Harry Hawks throwing out here. Oh, huge elbow drop going for the pin. Very lapsidical. Really having to spend some energy old forearm to kick out of that. But bounce back with that forearm. Oh, some shots. Swift kick gets Harry Hawks up against the ropes. Oh. Oh, stomp the chest from O'Grady. Knee drag there by Tyler York. Oh. Follows things up with an elbow drop. O'Grady though. Oh, jawbreaker. Oh, and another far round. Yeah, great wearer all by O'Grady there to turn the round, throws a big elbow of his own. <coughs> the speed and ferocity of these two, how they just follow up move after move is admirable love. Yeah, I can't help think, feel like this one might have got a little bit personal. Somewhere down the oh. line between York and O'Grady, because these two guys are not pulling their punches here tonight. Oh, cord breaker there. move is absolutely devastating when Sean O'Grady gets that run up and gets that speed to go along with the big knee. It's damn near unescapable. Is it shaking your doubts of O'Grady here? Well that you know he certainly impressed me against Tyler York here tonight. Oh, it's been a tremendous recovery, a hellacious, hellacious Furabala there to Tyler York and Tyler York who let's not forget has already a great track record in the injection division was beaten by a newbie here so perhaps there is life for Sean O'Grady in the injection division after all we will see apparently Reno Phillips has Rick Weaver there oh god I wonder what our world champion has to say here tonight
Well, can you argue that Dear Duran joining Magnum Opus hasn't raised this woman's profile even higher than it already was? Three matches, three main events for Dear Duran. win ratio over a four year period that is yeah. still quite impressive considering the amount of matches Duran has been in no. I really, you're right Max really yes, but auspices of Magnum Opus they could very well be the best days of their Duran very well yet to be making her way to the ring from Paris not quite the whole band here tonight, but she's got the uh, she's got the main man with her, the world champion Rick Fl Rick uh, Weaver, with a huge smile on his face. Three Women's Champion of 14 days, a former NEW Women's Junior Champion of 288 days, a former NEW Women's World Champion of 106 days. I don't know what Rick Weaver's uh, smiling about. I mean, he's very lucky not to be facing police charges for his actions over these past few months. A drop in the ocean, let's be honest. The paycheck that this guy cashes here nowadays. Sir, is Martin Cook. Crazy Hammer. Perhaps we'll get his uh, compensation if you will. We're going to get some kind of word soon as well on the people that Snake is going to be facing. Before Rick Weaver. This for me, Erwin, might just be the story of last year, the uh, the revitalization of the Outlaws as a unit, as the best in the women's tag team division. It's been quite the thing to see. I mean, some people had started to speculate that their time had perhaps had passed, that the torch had been passed, but the Outlaws once again rose to the challenge magnificently and are now proudly our women's tag team did tag team champions arguably our hottest division at the moment here in NEW. Oh, what from an event in Psycho Sonia just kicking off the wolf. Wing clipper. Well as you said a few weeks ago where we now women's division had a bit of praise from the NEW faithful. They have been red hot as of late. As you say, a lot of fans were sounding to believe they were a bit dead in the water in the tag team division. And then, of all the people to steal the number one contendership from it was Foxy Valentine's. Oh, Sonya going for an early pin there, only one. Yeah, that was the statement win for me. No, no disrespect to the champions, who were great champions in their own right, Diana Simmons and Cynthia Violet, but there. Uh, yeah, the, the beating Foxy Valentine was was undoubtedly that statement victory they needed on the way to those tag team championships. Oh, Dead Duran quickly wrapping Sonya up there. Yeah, well, uh, if you've not seen Dead Duran wrestle before, firstly, where have you been? Secondly, you're gonna you're gonna see a lot of technicality. There's no doubt about that. Oof. The French phenom, personally scouted and recruited by our former owner, Adrian Goldman. Which was a rarity at best. Oh! Taking some time to get some offense in outside the ring here. Snake so trying to turn the feather up. Shot to the gut by Durand. Oh. Caught Sonia coming in. Oh, really not an arm drag. Oh, swift kick. Jawbreaker. Count of six here. 
You know, I just like I like to peel the curtain back a little bit. You know, Opus are already pushing for more favourable terms for Day Duran in her contract. Can't go into too much about it, but yeah, they're they're basically arguing that her association with Magnum Opus makes her a more marketable wrestler, and therefore she should be paid more. So there you go. That's Opus's attitude towards Day Duran right now. I think they look at her as a little bit of a cash cow in the women's division. It's the only division they've never had any real imprint on before, so there's a lot of pressure on Dea Durant to deliver for Magnum Opus as a franchise. And Psycho Sonya into those steel steps. Ruth Wheeler just looking over the damage. Dea Durant goes back to the bar, swinging those right hooks. Words of encouragement from our slippery world champion. Oh. oh, and an exploder suplex out on those wafer thin mats. Dolph. Dolph did the run and they got bounding here. Another count of six. Oof. Well, as these two women are battling it out, I've got to ask you a question. There's been a lot of speculation about it, this new attitude, these actions of the last few months. You've known him since he broke into the business you were here on day one I mean what what is the change in our world champion Rick Weaver how has he changed because he came in as a rookie and he was sort of uh, slowly learning the ropes until he got under the wing of snake and I don't know what Again, what's caused him to make the decisions he's made in the past two years. The attack on Crazy Hammer, and now the attack on his mentor. Certainly cannot speak for that attitude. Oh, big elbow there by Sonya. As these two women not giving it any quarter. A lot of this match has been fought on the outside, so you've got to wonder how much damage has been done internally. Those wafer thin mats. Big bulldog there by Sonya. Oh, and we know the psycho can fly. Here we go. Oh my god! Sweet Jesus, I'm not even sure what that was. It was a 450 elbow, kind of two, and it's now 2.9. That was ridiculous. The can wheel elbow drop from Psycho Sonya. Going back up to the top rope once more. Going for it again. Oh! That's a 450 elbow. Two. No! The impact and again De Duran kicks out. <laughs> That's one of the most athletic elbow drops I have ever seen. That was fantastic. I have no idea how De Duran kicked out of two of those. Yeah, Sonia trying to play the run at her own game. I'm not sure how wise that is. Quick counter there by the French Phenom. Oh, yeah. I think that's what you get when you try technicality against the run. Ankle lock. Big submission here. Oh, look at that wrench. Great turn. Oh, how much damage has been done there to the foot of Sonia? You saw her clutching her ankle there. Oh, sharpshooter. Sweep of the legs, sharpshooter locked in. All that pressure on that already wounded ankle. Sonya again fighting out. Yeah, the power of the legs there from Sonya, very impressive indeed. Dolph but sent it outside. There is no question that De Duran is trying to work on the vertical base of her opponent. Oof. Six. 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 Six.
Adesanya back into the ring. Again, he's going up to that top rope. Going to a feet. Oh, Sonny changed the line. I think went for a bulldog there. Duran dodged off. Straight jacket, jacket, suplex. Oh. Relentless ground and pound attack by Dea Duran was enough to wear down Sonia. I'm not sure if it was one specific move, I think it was just a series of events. Oof, what a chop. But you know, that was at least, I know rope, the rope break broke the hold pretty quickly but that was at least the second sharpshooter of the night she'd already had at least an ankle lock on top of that you can't discount the pain factor that's a, that's, that's a very good point yeah three matches three main events and three wins for Deirdre Ram as a member of Magnum Opus.